All right, I'm gonna go over eight different factors that I made up. And, and usually about this time, people look at this list and they're like, where's the predator factor? We're gonna, I've decided to, to manage to talk about predators in a separate thing. And that's, that's gonna come later. But let's pop through these real quick. So all of them start with a, a, a range of zero to 10. So zero is the worst and 10 is the best. And so vegetation, so this is about how much vegetation is the chicken exposed to? Um, and this is the only one where I'm going to have some negative values. And this, the fact that I put negative values on one is the reason why I have gotten probably 80% to 90% of my hate mail on, about this article. <laughs> um, so then I, I think a big part of it is, is that if I can get my feed bill near zero, then I have increased my profit margin um, by a lot. So, um, and plus I like the idea of the animals eating from polyculture. Um, much more so than eating from uh, some sort of dried feed that's moldy. Bugs, they, they need bugs. Poop, there's two poop factors. One is how much does a chicken have to, how much time does a chicken spend standing around in its own shit or being forced to eat stuff that's covered in its own shit versus the other one, which is like, how much chicken shit do I have to deal with? How much work do I have to put into caring for these chickens? Um, and then the natural habitat, which is kind of related to the greens that we saw earlier, the vegetation. But natural habitat is more than just vegetation. Natural habitat is going to include shrubs and trees. Confinement, how, how much movement are they allowed? Are they allowed to walk around you know, 100 feet, or are they in a teeny tiny cage? And how much I spend on food. And then now we jump into the factory farm. Now notice how everything is a zero except for work. And I gave them a two because I can't help but think that they put them in all those cages and they, they suck at all these other things just to save themselves some work. So there's going to be less work, but still work. This is eggs. This is what it looks like. This is where even organic eggs come from. More eggs. This is meat birds. And now what they're going to do is they're going to have a little something. Now I understand I've got like a magic pointer. Is this it? Oh, look at that. So what they'll do is when they get to a certain size, they'll open up a little area over here and they'll be like a little lawn. They'll, they'll have a mowed lawn of just grass, which is kind of freaky as fuck, right? Because that means somebody has been out there with the weed and feed. And, and then it'll be like this 10 by 10 area and they'll open it up and the chickens don't go in there. Why do the chickens not go in there? It's, it's grass, it's life. Oh. That's where they get killed? Scary. They haven't had a mother to show them that it's safe. They didn't have a mother to show them that it's safe. It is, it's scary to them. It's, it's like, does anybody know what this is? Has anybody seen some of this stuff before? Is it gonna kill us? Do you know? I'm just gonna go get something to eat. I'll be right back. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, they don't, they just, so they open it up. So now, free range. These chickens, these chickens, that one right there, that's a free range chicken because of, I'm liking this little pointer now, because of the little opening that was over here with the grass in it. Then, then that guy, his name is Bob. That's Bob with one O and, and he's a free range chicken now because of the opening that was over there with the grass in it. But really he's telling everybody to get out of his way because there's something over here he wants to try and eat. All right. So, coop and run. This is where nearly everybody starts. This is where I started as an adult. All right, if we look over the metrics, then um, we do have a, uh, I mean, a lot of the factors are still pretty low. Um, it's possible if you had a huge run, you could have a fair bit of vegetation. But most of the chicken runs that I see have zero vegetation. Um, bugs, whatever bugs happen to come into the run. Poop cleaning factor, not good. Because a lot of times there's a, there's a coop in there that needs you to go in and scrape out all the poopies. And um, even if you've done some deep bedding like stuff, it's still a job. And if you have um, had human discipline, lots of human discipline, it won't be stinky, but it'll still be work. Mm -hmm. If you're kind of a little shy on human discipline, what happens then? It's, 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 it's a damn nasty. And is it damn nasty for you or the chickens or both? 
So um, uh, work factor, uh, there's still a fair bit of work that goes on. You, I mean, a lot of people have to go in twice a day, once to open up the coop to let them out, and then uh, once in the, in the evening to go and shut the coop up. <laughs> um, natural habitat, are there trees in there? You could have trees in a run, that's possible. Um, confinement, some of them are really, really confined. Like they don't have much more space than they would have if they were in a factory farm. Uh, and the food cost factor is generally this, you know, the same as if it was a factory farm. I, I think that Coop and Run builds disease. Um, and we're going to talk about some other systems later that still, that, you know, it's like I want to talk about where they try to hybridize Coop and Run with some of those things and they still have the disease problem. Um, oh, all that poop is headed down to your groundwater supply so you can enjoy poop Kool-Aid. That's <laughs> got to be a thing to look forward to, right? So you get to a place and they're like, come praise my chicken thing here. And it's like, no, nah, I decided not to drink your water. <laughs> oh, I, I got this from a website with their permission. And then I posted my article. And then a year later, the website disappeared. And it was called something like happyeggs.com. <laughs> There's, there's some of the criminals right there. And then, uh, th what's this stuff right here? What's going on? They're digging dust bats. They're dust bats, yep. And they bowl it out. And, and it's like, how many trees are in there? That metal one with no branches. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one. Okay, so, so uh, this, this, uh, um, thing bugs me in, in like 20 different ways and it was at a site called happychickens.org or happyeggs.org or something like that. This is my original coop and run from long, long ago. And you can kind of see, you know, there's, there's my chickens. They're, um, they're chilling uh, underneath this, uh, I think that's a serviceberry bush. Um, but you can kind of see that, that they're kind of like getting down to the grass here. I also noticed that when it comes to this stuff over here, it turns out they like every kind of weed better than grass. Um, and, and as I, you know, I think at the time I had this, I hadn't even heard the word permaculture yet, but as I looked at this, it really bothered me that they obviously like to eat greens, but yet this system was fixed and, I, and, and it's like these are steel posts in the ground and six foot uh, uh, field fence. And so they, you know, I, I wanted them to come, you know, have a good time in here. And, and so um, this, this system bothered me. But there you go, my first uh, 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 coop and run. And, and the coop was not pretty. The coop was stinky and it was not designed to be a coop. And, and so it was not easy to clean. So it was like, oh, and I hated cleaning it. And it's like, there's gotta be a better way. Here's some chickens I saw in a, in a city somewhere. And notice how these leaves are all uh, picked off about an inch away from the fence. Okay, I, I imagine nobody knows what this is. This is, um, who here has heard of the Bullock Brothers? Magnificent, dreamy place. I, has anybody been there? Nobody. Awesome, awesome place. So beautiful, so, so lovely. I, I hope that, it, like, if, if we're good, maybe someday we'll get to be as lovely as the Bullock Brothers. Um, but... A bunch of people from the Bullock Brothers saw my first presentation, including this picture, and what I'm about to tell you, and they didn't talk to me for three years <laughs> after this. But um, So what they were trying to do is that um, they would put the chickens in half of this, and then they would plant a bunch of stuff in the other half. And uh, they thought what would happen is they'd grow a bunch of stuff in the other half, and then they would turn the chickens loose in that half, and the chickens would eat that stuff, and then they would start growing stuff in the first half and kind of go back and forth. <coughs> the problem is when the chickens would go into an area, they would obliterate it in about half an hour. So then all the stuff that was grown there is, would be gone really fast. I think it's a great idea, but it doesn't really work. Oh, and then they, they have, they're growing comfrey right next to it because um, what would happen is, is whenever you're doing a tour, what you want to do is take some comfrey leaves and throw it inside and watch the chickens go ape shit over it. If chickens go ape shit over anything, um, is that a good sign? No. That's not a good sign. It, it means they're fucking starving to death. And 
you know, please throw throw anything over the fence. We'll eat fucking anything. All we got is this moldy chicken food and dirty water. Please throw greenery of any kind. Now, um, chickens do eat comfrey, um, but when they've got a large buffet, they tend to not eat very much of it. They eat a, they eat a moderate amount. But then people are like, oh, my chickens totally love comfrey. And that's because all they've got is moldy food and whatever leaves they happen to throw into the chicken thing. And they're like, look at them, go for it. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about animal husbandry, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.